Hello, welcome everyone out there from the digital world. I am Tony Leone, and joining us today is Teher Bebehani. Teher, thank you so much for jumping on today, man. Tony, it's great to see you. Thank you for your time. Of course, of course. So there's a lot of stuff happening uh, with Samsung this year, and we're going to get to that. But we talked a little bit earlier, and this is what I'm interested in right here. There's something happening in your garage. Please explain what is going on. But thank you, Tony. Thanks for asking. It turns out today uh, we have a uh, food delivery. In fact, we, my, my daughters and my wife set up a, an entire operation when uh, the whole situation occurred last year to provide food safety to our county here. And um, it's become a whole startup feeding uh, the families and it's a non-for-profit uh, organization. So we get delivery of food from the county and many of different, different companies and organizations. There's a whole dispatch system going on and the, we have volunteers that pick up the food, they bag it and they provide these very, uh, let's say customized uh, meals to different families, all anonymous. Uh, and done with a high degree of um, respect and integrity to, to support our, our community. And I think it's been, it's been fantastic. So today is one of those days. And uh, there's a lot of buzz uh, in, in, the, in the house as families come in to, to pick up food. A lot of running around, but that's great. And, and kudos to your daughters and the family for joining in with the community. I think that's fantastic. This idea of collaboration and kind of coming together so we could all, you know, be better and keep moving forward and keeping our heads up. I think that's, you know, very positive movement. Um, we spoke a little bit earlier that your daughters are in college. What are they studying? Are they taking after pops at all? What's going on here? Well, one of them, actually, I think they're far, far brighter than I ever was. And, and they, they do <laughs> remind me of that <laughs> on an ongoing basis. Uh, the older one, Yasmin, is studying uh, biology uh, in the University of Maryland. And the younger one, Lily, is uh, studying journalism in uh, UNC in Chapel Hill. So they're both away and um, they're, they're working in, on campus right now. They're studying campus. Well, I'm sure you are one proud father, uh, again, just with the work that they're doing, not only in school, but also at home. Uh, fantastic. So to start things off, many people are going to be joining us today, VX, from the comfort of their own homes, much like we are. So how has re remote working for you been this past year? And what are some of the challenges that you face with remote work? So let me tell you what worked well for us. Um, you know, we were very lucky. We work in a high tech company. We have good platform, good infrastructure, and we have fantastic products that make, um, that enable us as a team to work uh, together remotely. Um, we just launched our um, Galaxy S21, which is a 5G device. In fact, it's designed for this exact hybrid work environment where it has a very good camera, extremely um, intuitive UX um, and tight integration with Microsoft. So it's a heavy duty work uh, device that we can use to collaborate. We also have uh, tablets and PCs and Chromebooks, which are top of the line, uh, which enable us to work remotely and very effectively. And that's been very positive for us. I think um, overall, if I, the learnings are that Perhaps it would have been great to have a accessible 5G um, service all over the country to, to consumers and to businesses, which would have enabled them to do so much more. I'm sure that's coming this, this year, but that is one uh, area of, I think, immediate learning. The, the, the other thing I want to tell you is there was a lot of talk about digital transformation. Um, as businesses, as consumers started working in this new manner. And I think a lot of us initially were behind. We lagged behind the use and the usage of these platforms and these video calling, messaging, and so forth. And we very quickly adopted. And you know, in school systems is the same, hospitals are the same, and home. We quickly adopted. We began to use it. And now that we, we are using these, we recognize, we realize that they actually need to have more a feature, more functionality that's, uh, that makes our lives easier as we continue to use these. So digital transformation, I think, is here. It's, I would say that phase is over, but a, a user experience reimagination phase is now beginning. The companies are now looking what happens next at work and at home. I love hearing your insight because obviously 
this is what your job is about, right? Foresight, looking into the future, what do we need? Um, but for some of these other industries, how has their business been transformed over this past year? And what can we expect to see from these other guys? You've alluded to it a little bit, um, but from their changing, looking into what's happened this past year, going into the future. Well, listen, we are very lucky, very proud, um, and, and really honored to work with some incredible marquee brand names. Um, and they have been extremely creative and innovative. A large uh, global retail company uh, basically had to shut down their stores and they went online. E-commerce became the mainstay of how they conduct their business. Now they're working with us to uh, basically offer a new experience to their customers as the stores open and they go into a hybrid model. So they will be uh, outfitting their associates with Xcover Pro devices, which we at Samsung uh, have offered to the marketplace. These are rugged devices, really useful for the frontline workers. So when we go back to a store to buy products, the experience is very different. Uh, an associate would approach us with the information right at their fingertips, and the experience is more like a concierge service. So we go in, it's fast, it's safe, it's easy, and I think it's very delightful as we go and complete our shopping experience. So that, I, that type of an experience, I think, will be much more um, common as we move to the next phase and becomes a hybrid online, offline, digital, physical type of an experience for all of us. We uh, work with um, companies in healthcare, which um, have been leading much of the innovation. We were very lucky to work and partner with New York Presbyterian Hospital. They were one of the early adopters of telemedicine. And they saw the usage of telemedicine increase by 500%. And they, over time, improved the experience. So telemedicine and being able to, get, uh, to obtain care remotely is now a very important part of the offer that they provide to their, uh, to their community. We're also very pleased to work with Home Care Home Base which provides services to hospice. Um, and, and, uh, and what they did is they began to use our tablets and our, our devices to, uh, so that a healthcare provider would actually drive to, uh, to a location. And instead of going inside immediately, they would have a video conference or a chat and they would get the necessary information and fill out the necessary forms. And once the time was right to go in, to finish the exam um, in, in person and physically next to the patient, then they would do that. So the visits would be shorter, they'd be safer, and very effective and efficient. Again, the experience is what actually I think is critical. It's, it's a, a new experience. It's a more effective experience for everyone given the times that we live in. Um, so these have been a fantastic um, projects that we've worked on. It goes back to what I was saying earlier, that we really are in a phase of reimagining the experience as we move to the next phase beyond digital transformation. Absolutely. I am a fan of this idea of advocating not only for our hospitals, but you know, it's going to affect the community at large. So that transition needed to happen. So I'm um, very proud and, and thankful for technology like your business as far as expanding that growth and, and making that more approachable. Um, so looking ahead, what are some predictions that you can see happening for technology disruption this year? So a few things um, that I believe will really improve this entire uh, remote working experience. The first one, and a fundamental one, is 5G. Uh, I think 5G is definitely going to become a reality, accessible. If you're working at home, if you run a small business, or if you have a large enterprise operation. So 5G and accessibility to 5G opens up uh, a whole new potential for applications to run. I think in many respects, it's a catalyst for a whole new experience that we'll have going forward. And we have the devices, the ecosystem is getting ready to sort of take off. So 5G is critical. The other aspect which ties to that you know, are the whole applications which are powered by AI or machine learning. Some of these run at the edge, meaning it's uh, right next to our business. Some of these run in a cloud. Now, what do these mean? So it means that 
we will be able to run new applications around robotics, around communications, around collaboration. And instead of having a number of only single threaded applications and run disjointed, they, these experiences come together to offer something totally new for us. Um, and we see this happening as well in different industries. And I, I think that will be a game changer for many of us as well. Finally, I think the entire experience around collaboration and work will also evolve dramatically. As I was saying, we are, imagine we are in sort of version 3.0. We'll very quickly move to version 5.0 of video conferencing, of messaging, of emailing, uh, of basically bringing all this together. On top of it, maybe connecting it to how I feel today at work so that I can conduct myself more effectively and um, more, more efficiently and in, it's in, in part of a team because I can no longer see them as I used to before. So these changes will take place. These new experiences will evolve. And we're looking forward to being part of that. So looking forward, I'm, I'm curious for your particular insight. These other industries that may not already have the infrastructure there or they haven't, they're turning on blind eye to it. Are these guys going to you know, be slowly left behind or is there going to be a community effort to kind of bring these guys along? What's the, the mindset there as far as you know, some of these smaller growth industries? So that's a really good question. Look, I think if you ask me in retrospect what we could have done better uh, as, 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 a, as a, let's say, a tech industry overall, uh, not just us as Samsung, but partners, service providers, um, and the entire the, uh, industry, I think you, you see two groups, two categories. You see the businesses that manage to invest, manage to ad adopt, manage to adapt uh, to digital transformation and now going to the next phase. And then you see those that fell behind. They just didn't have the right amount of investment, the resources, the know-how. So it's sort of like having a, a prime and a subprime environment. Those that thrive will do well, and those that fell behind probably won't make it or will be struggle as they make it. I think here is where we need to have some type of a policy, uh, you know, government incentives, some type of support to our community so that we make sure everybody manages to, to thrive as we move forward. So that is one area of that I would have, looking in retrospect, I wish we collectively uh, could have done more in, in for, for, the, for the country. The, um, I think going forward, being able to collaborate between different industries, between different partners to bring solutions quickly is really fundamental. And we have actually been able to partner up with many of different industry players and leaders to create solutions. And I think that's a highlight of the experience and sort of for, for me personally, uh, in, in, as I look in the, in, the, in the last year, I think it was a, a, a watershed moment that we all realized that no one camp company can do it alone. We need to come together to be able to help. And we did. Absolutely. And I can completely agree. I mean, the change is slowly going to be inevitable, but when you have last year, it really just put things on a major fast track that you're right. Some of these guys just couldn't, you know, they were, they were left behind. So when it comes to all of these changes that are happening for those in the past, and then also looking forward, what advice do you have? You speak of this collaborative effort. What advice do you have when it comes to sharing thoughts, insights with other leaders of other industries? And, and what are you doing to make sure that, you know, they're staying afloat as well as your mental sanity with so much change that is happening? So I, I'll break it into three different steps. And I actually follow this on a daily basis myself. The first thing I do is I reach out to my friends. I reach out to my colleagues in different companies. And I ask them, how are you doing? Are you feeling the same as I am? I'm ha I have these challenges. How do we address these? And, and I think there's, everybody's helping each other out. We all um, collaborate and getting their feedback and, and just making sure that I realize I'm not alone is a big deal as we manage to, uh, to sort of uh, handle a lot of these challenges that come our way. The second part of this is listening to uh, our employees, our own employees. They give us some really good feedback. What's working for them? Uh, are they overwhelmed? How are they feeling? Being empathetic into the overall situation uh, of working remotely and not being able to see each other is something that's very important for us. We, took, we take their feedback, and in fact, we have done that uh, throughout the year, and we implement that in policies, procedures, 
how we communicate, how we collaborate, how many meetings do we have, how often do we have meetings, how late, what do we do with time zones and so forth. What do we do with families that have, um, that have children at home and how do we know and how do we respect their time, their private time. Um, so these are things that we have taken into account and implemented procedures and processes. And I think lastly, we talk to our customers quite a bit. I mentioned some of the fantastic uh, creative minds that we see in, in the industry that are thinking next step and the step after that. And we continuously try to understand uh, from different industries and, and customers, what is it that they need going forward and try to brainstorm with them. And I think that's been very effective for us. Well, Tahir, I could be here all day. I love hearing your insight and having these conversations. Thank you so much for joining us. Anything that you would like to mention that you forgot to mention before we leave you today? I just want to tell you that I'm really proud to be part of this company. I'm really proud that we did everything that we have done as Samsung, as a B2B organization. This was an incredible time for us to be relevant, to have passion, and to show purpose for what we do every day as technologists to help our community. So it's a, it's a heartfelt thank you to everyone at Samsung and to our partners out there. Of course, thank you to Hair. That is the Hair Bebahani, and I am Tony Leon signing off for VX. Stay tuned for more virtual experience live.